Several society organizations in Zambia have expressed concern over what they say is the unconstitutional denial by the police of the right of opposition parties to hold political rallies. The police say they support they support the democratic rights of all political parties and citizens to assemble and express their views if they do so within the bounds of the law. Father Emmanuel Chikoya is the general secretary of the Zambia Council of Churches, one of nearly 12 civil society organizations that published a statement on Tuesday. He tells me the organizations condemn the uneven use of the police in deciding who should protest and who should not. I think this is triggered by what happened on last Saturday. One of the opposition parties, the New Heritage Party, planned to have a rally in Mandevu, which is one of the high-density areas in Lusaka. Police never gave them permission and told them they couldn't meet because of security concerns. But the same police then came in big numbers, heavily armed in terms of weapons, in terms of vehicles, the kind of armored vehicles they were using. And right under their watch, the members of the ruling party came with intention to disrupt that meeting with all kinds of weapons, pangas, you know, all kinds of things. They watched those without doing anything. So my point is, our point is that it is easy for the ruling party to meet any time, to gather in any cage. And today, our memorial, memorial park, one of the private burial sites, there was a burial of one of the ruling party members. They basically turned the place upside down. If a similar action was done by opposition cadres, we were going to be talking of you know, casualties by now. Father Chikoya, I am sure you are also aware that the government has been concerned recently about individuals making statements and inciting tribalism. So you can yes. see why the government probably is trying to make sure that you get permission to hold their protest. They are not asking for permission. They are supposed to notify the police and people should be allowed to freely protest. The problem comes in when the, those in the ruling party feel more entitled to visibility and so they don't want any other to speak. And so to, in order to scare the others, they will come and disrupt and cause mayhem. And so, yes, you talked about tribalism. That we have condemned and we said any person that promotes tribalism and they, they break the law, they should be treated in accordance with the law. But in Zambia, you will note that even though some of the ministers in government have uttered, uh, made tribal utterances, and then later on they backpedal and say, no, I think I was misquoted. There are videos trending also of ruling party cadres challenging and even basically telling the IG of police that uh, we will take the law into our hands, and they are doing that. And we are seeing a narrative that we saw during the PF regime where police were incapacitated, police would helplessly stand by and watch the ruling party cutters do illegalities such as, you know, blocking traffic, being all over, sitting on windows, on top of vehicles, and uh, causing mayhem. So that is an issue. That is what is worrisome. If the law is being applied equally, we'll be saying, yes, thank you to the government, thank you to the police. We don't want anarchy, we don't want lawlessness. Just within the last 10 days or so, cutters in full view of the police with all kinds of weapons again, were insulting the former head of state and howling all kinds of unpleasantries against him. Those border on hate speech. And the duty of the police, the role of the police, is to make sure that both in the ruling party and outside it, any lawbreaker must be apprehended. So, Father Chikoya, if these groups feel that your rights are being violated, uh, why don't you go to court? I think sometimes we do voice out. Uh, there have been instances where, especially those that are very competent in the area of law, and for example, Chapter One Foundation has been able to take on certain cases. They, they sued, and so through those, uh, where necessary, 
we are able to pursue legal matters. But of course, it's an issue of cost and all those delayed processes that become unsustainable. Father Chikoya, so very nice to talk with you and thank you so much. Britain intends to begin deporting asylum seekers to Rwanda on July 24th, a government lawyer said on Monday, although the hotly contested scheme is dependent on Prime Minister Alicia Sunaki's Conservative Party winning the upcoming election. Sending asylum seekers who have arrived in Britain without permission to Rwanda is one of Sunaki's flagship policies, but legal and parliamentary obstacles have meant it has never got off the ground. Sunak has said the deportation flights will not leave before the July 4th election, but has promised if he wins, they would begin soon after. The opposition uh, Labour Party, leading by about 20 points in opinion polls, has pledged to scrap the plan if elected. In documents submitted to the London High Court as part of the challenge to the policy by charity asylum aid, government lawyers said the intention was to effect removals with a flight to Rwanda on July 23, 2024. However, government lawyer Edward Brown later told the court that an operational update from the Home Office said the first flight would in fact leave on July 24th. The scheme, first drawn by one of Sunaki's predecessors, Boris Johnson, in 2022, aims to deter asylum seekers making the dangerous journey from the channel in small boats from France. Last November, the UK Supreme Court declared the policy unlawful, prompting Sunak to sign a new treaty with the country and to pass new legislation to override this. Asylum AIDS lawyer Charlotte Kiliol said the date unmarked for the flight was news to us. The judge, Martin Chamberlain, remarked, this is all going to be subject to the outcome of the general election, but we obviously cannot make any predictions about that. The numbers of asylum seekers crossing the channel has risen to record numbers this year, with more than 10,000 people arriving so far after numbers fell by a third in 2024. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.